Hello and welcome to this deep learning tutorial part 2. This tutorial is about object detection. We will walk you through a TensorFlow code using which we will do object detection in images. We will tell you what are the libraries that are required, a little bit about the Cocoa data set and then we will show you the implementation code itself, a demo of the code. Alright, so let's get started. So what is the TensorFlow object detection API? It is an open source framework which is actually provided by the TensorFlow team and there are trained models available and the sample code is also available which we can use in order to easily detect objects in images and videos. This is pretty robust and can detect objects fairly quickly and this is very easy for people to use as well people with very less or no knowledge of machine learning or deep learning can also with a little bit of python programming knowledge can actually use this api this library to build object detection applications this is a list of libraries that are required and they have been shown in the code as well the exact purpose of each of this library why it is required is out of the scope of this tutorial but we will see in the code as we walk through some of these libraries how and why they are used the coco data set coco stands for common objects in context so this data set consists of 300,000 images of uh, 90 most commonly found objects like chairs and tables and so on and so forth. So this model has been trained or in fact a set of models have been trained on this data set and this is pretty good to detect the most common objects in the images and videos. So with that let's get into the code all right so the first part is to import all these libraries and this we have shown you in uh, the slides as well again a large part of this will be for doing some helper functions and uh, maybe for visualizing the images and so on and so forth so that's the reason they are required as i said uh, the exact details of each and every library probably is out of scope but these are needed so as a first step maybe you just go ahead and include these libraries and run the code and maybe at a later point we can discuss what each of these libraries does now this will work with tensorflow version higher than 1.4 so if you are having tensorflow version below 1.4 you may have to upgrade to a higher version so let me go ahead and execute the cell and uh, we also need this line of code to make sure that once we run this object detection the labeled images are displayed within this uh, notebook and many of you by now must be familiar with this and we will import a few utility libraries and you will see that we will be using some of these for visualization purpose so once the objects are detected we need to display the information what that object is and then what percentage of confidence the model has so all these details that's the utility functions that are stored here and then the next part is to prepare the model as i mentioned we will be using an existing trained model the tensorflow team has actually provided these models the one that we will be using is ssd with the mobile net but you can actually use any one of the ones that are listed in this url let me just quickly take you through this url these are a bunch of models trained models that are readily available for anybody to use it is open source and let me scroll down the only thing is that if there are some of them with where the accuracy is much higher but they take longer and uh, there are some where the accuracy is not so high and they are much faster so they are faster but the accuracy may not be that very high so you can play around with some of these and we in this particular exercise or in this particular tutorial we are using this SSD model which is SSD mobile net version 1 so that's the model that we'll be using so in this cell we are primarily creating a bunch of uh, variables with the various for example the name of the model the path and so on and so forth so that we will be using these names 
in the next step which is to download this model and install it locally these are also referred to as uh, frozen models so once they are trained and then you kind of extract or uh, you, you freeze the model so that's the reason they are called frozen model so that others can just use this without any further training so this is where we download and extract our model locally so this will take a little while let me see if i can wait or maybe pause the video and come back once it is done might take a little while let's see if it uh, completes i have a pretty high speed network but even then it takes some time so that's good but this part is over now let us see this part and yes both are done so once that is done we need to load some label mapping uh, basically what this will do is your model as you may be aware by now if you do some classification the model will actually not give any output as a text it will give some numbers so if there are five classes it will say okay this belongs to modern class one or two or three or five and so on the numbers now each of these will obviously the numbers will not make any sense to the outside world so we need to do some small mapping so in this case let's say one may be a chair two may be a table three may be a balloon and so on so that kind of number to text mapping we need to do and that is what is being done in this uh, particular cell and then we have a helper code which will load the image and convert it into a number numpy array so that the numpy array is what gets processed and used by the model to do the detection part of it so that is what this uh, method is all about so we will be there later on we will be calling that uh, function and next is uh, preparation for detection so here we are basically telling where the images are stored and how many images or what is the naming convention or format of the images now if you want you can modify this code for example currently i have test underscore images as my folder so let me go and show this to you so this is under my object detection folder I have another subfolder where I am storing my images which is uh, text underscore images now you can rename this folder and give some other name and then in your code you can probably give that particular name for the subfolder similarly the format of these files what is the name and format of these files here it is in a very simple format which is the names of the files are like beach 1 beach 2 beach 3 and so on so I have taken beach as the theme so so I have images which are related to beaches so this is beach 1 beach 2 and then beach 3 I have a few others but we will use these three for our demo and so that's what I'm saying here the name of the images will be beach something dot jpeg which is uh, jpeg format and in this curly braces basically we will will be filled with either one two or three based on in this particular uh, for loop okay so that is what this is doing all right so the next step is to run inference on these images in a loop and what we are basically doing here is um, getting these images one by one and then running through the model to find out what are the objects that can be detected and then against each of the object a box will be drawn and it will be labeled with the name and the percentage of accuracy or confidence that the model detects these objects okay so that is uh, the function here and so let me just run that piece of code and here is basically where we are calling this function so we are loading this images and then we are calling this function uh, for each image and then we are displaying this using the matplotlib library so let's uh, run this it will take one image at a time and then detect the images now the beauty is that the same format of the code can be used for doing object detection in a video so we have another video for doing object detection in a video so most of the code out there will be reused from here and the only thing is that instead of reading the images from the local storage we read the frames from the video and there is a neat little video reader that is available and it will be shown in the other video and frame by frame we read the video and then pass on to this function and it will act as if each of these frames is an image and then it will do the same object detection 
on the entire video so that's in a separate video just uh, look out for that and actually the information about that is uh, provided uh, in the cards the i symbol so that's the the video object detection in video that's the separate uh, tutorial all right so now that we have all the pieces together this the last cell is where the whole action takes place so let's uh, run this and see how it looks so it will take probably a little while and there are about three images let's see what it detects there we go so good so the first one it has detected a person and that too with 97 percent accuracy which is uh, i think pretty good okay and then the next image it detects umbrella and chair there are a few other objects but it's not able to detect it has detected umbrella with uh, 63 percent accuracy or confidence rather and uh, the chair with uh, 58 percent again not bad then let's see the next image so here these are actually balloons hot air balloons but the model thinks it is a kite which is uh, probably not that bad it sees there's something in the sky and therefore probably it thinks it is a kite and it detects that with 65% uh, uh, confidence okay so that was pretty much all i wanted to show you in this particular tutorial about uh, object detection in images and with that we come to the end of this tutorial i hope you liked it and if you have any questions if you have any comments please feel free to write it below and don't forget to watch the other tutorial which does object detection in a video all right thank you very much once again and have a great day Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.